So, to continue our discussion, I will be discussing the Spearman rank order coefficient of correlation RS. Okay, so this uh, method or this treatment, statistical treatment, is denoted by RS and it is or it doesn't require the stringent assumption of normality like its counterpart, the Pearson product moment coefficient of correlation R. So this non-parametric test is used to find out if there is a significant relationship between two variables, the dependent and independent variable. Again, as I have said, it is the counterpart of the Pearson product moment coefficient of correlation R. So when do we use this? It is used when the relationship between the dependent and independent variables X and Y is looked into. Your distribution or our distribution is not normal. We use ranking. Normal or nominal or ordinal data are used. So why do we use it? If the Pearson product coefficient of correlation cannot be used because the, string, the condition is not that stringent. Okay? So how do we use the Spearman rank order coefficient of correlation RS? We first rank the data in the X, that is the independent variable, rank the data in Y, the dependent variable, then find the difference, the D, or the difference between Rx and Ry, find the D square, that is squaring the difference between Rx and Ry, get the summation of D squared, determine the sample size N, use the formula and study the sample. Okay? So the formula is Rs is equal to 1 minus 6 times the summation of D squared over N times N squared minus 1. 1 and 6, these are constants. So for our example, the following are the number of hours which 12 students spent in studying for a midterm examination and the grades they obtained in English. Calculate Rs at 0 0.05 level of significance. Okay? So... Here are the number of hours spent in studying, which will be our X, and the midterm grades that will be our Y. So the first thing to do is to rank our data in X and then in Y. So for our number of hours studied in uh, number of hours spent in studying, the first one is five, then second is six. And then next, we have 6, then 8, that would be 3. And then 10, we have two tens. So 1, 2, 3, then 10 will be 4 point, uh, no, yeah, 4.5. And then 4.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 6 is, we have 10, 11, 6, then 12 is 7. And then 8 is 15. We only have 115, 8. And then 9 is 18. And then 12 is 9. 10 is 19. And then we have two 20s that will be 11.5. And this is also 11.5. Okay? So that is how we rank our data. For the midterm grades, we have our smallest is or our, our lowest is 50. And then 60, we have only 160. So 2, and then 2, then 65, that is 3, and then 65, then 70, that will be our 4, and then next is 79, that will be 5, and then 80, we have it 6, and then 82, that is 7. And then 85, we have 285, 7. Then 85 is 8.5, 8.5. Then 9, 10 is, we have 90. And then 11, 92, and then 12, 94. Then next is we get the difference. We have here 0, we have 0, we have 1, we have 1.5, we have 1.5. We have 0 0.5, we have 1.5, we have 0, 0, 0 0.5, we have 3, and we have 0 0.5, okay? Then next is, let us get d squared, okay? So anyways, 
we can just use our stat mode in our calculator to compute for our d and our d squared. Okay? So again, mode 3, we have mode 3, 1. Okay, so we have there mode 3, 1. Okay, so we have uh, 0, then 0, then 1, then 1.5, then 1.5, then 0 0.5, and then 1.5, and then we have 0, 0, then uh, 0. Point, no, no, this is 0. 0.5, and then 3, and then 0. 0.5. Okay, so let us check. We have 0, 0, 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 0, 0, 0 0.5, 3, and 0.5. Okay? So on, again, shift 1, then sum. That's 3. And then let us get first the summation of D. We have 10. Okay? So our summation of D is 10. And then, our summation of d squared is shift 1, 3, 1. We have 17.5. Okay? Summation of d squared, we have 17.5. Okay? So, we already have our values. Okay? So, for uh, to answer it in stepwise method, for our problem statement, <coughs> is there... A significant relationship between the number of hours spent in studying and the grade okay so our grade is the midterm grade okay this is for the midterm grade so for our hypothesis is our null hypothesis there is no significant relationship so there is significant The number of hours spent in studying and the midterm grade. Okay? For our HA, that is the contradiction of our null hypothesis that there is a significant relationship between the number of hours is spent in studying and the midterm grade. Okay? For the level of significance, we have their alpha at 0 0.05. We are going to test this at alpha is equal to 0 0.05. For the degrees of freedom, we have 12 minus 2, that is 10. Okay? And then, for our R, for our RS, okay? Can you please look up at your table which uh, I have already attached or uploaded in your LMS? Okay, so you have there RS at 0 0.05 with 10 degrees of freedom. We have 0 0.648. 0 0.648. Okay? So for the statistical treatment, that is Spearman. Spearman. Or Spearman rank or RS. 
Okay? Then, for the computation, we have Rs is equal to 1 minus 6 times the summation of d squared over, again, we have 6 times the summation of d squared over n times n squared minus 1. Okay, so for this one, we have 1 minus 6 times, what is our summation of d squared? We have 17.5. 17.5 divided by n is 12 times 12 squared minus 1. So we have here, we have 1 minus 6 times 17.5 over 12 times 12 squared minus 1. We have 0 0.9388. Okay, so again, remember, what is our decision rule? If the computed value of Rs is greater than the Rs critical value, then reject HO. So here... Since our conclusion, for our conclusion, since Rs computed that is equal to 0 0.9388 is greater than our Rs at 0 0.05, which is equal to 0 0.648, we reject HO. There is a significant relationship between the number of hours spent in studying and the midterm grades. Okay, then, next is the Friedman FR test for randomized block design. So, it is a non-parametric test used for comparing the distributions of measurements for K-treatments laid out in B blocks using the randomized block design. So, this is the formula that we're going to use. We have there, FR is equal to 12 over BK times K plus 1 times the summation of treatment squared minus... 3 times B times K plus 1. Okay, so remember our B is the number of blocks. K is the number of treatments. And TI is the sum of uh, 4 treatments. Okay, so B is the number of blocks. K is the number of treatments. Okay, so for our example, in a study of the probability of reaction to antibiotics in 5 children, so we have there, in children, okay, we have five samples of healthy three children were used as subjects to assess their reaction to taste the four antibiotics. So we have there, five children, we have four antibiotics. The children's response was measured on a 10 centimeter visual analog scale incorporating the use of faces from sad low score to happy high score. So the minimum score was zero and the maximum was 10. The following data were recorded. Okay? So you have there the child 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the treatments 1, 2, 3, and 4 antibiotics. So we have there our ranking. Oh, no. The, the, we have there our uh, children's responses. Okay? So for the problem, is there a significant difference in the reaction of the five children to four antibiotics? Hypothesis, there is no significant difference in the reaction of five children to four antibiotics that is for the null. And for the alternative hypothesis, there is a significant difference in the reaction of, uh, reaction of five children to four antibiotics. So for the level of significance, again, for the table, we use the chi-square table. 
For the level of significance, alpha is equal to 0 0.05. For the degrees of freedom, we'll be using K minus 1 or the number of groups or the number of treatments minus 1. So we have 4 treatments minus 1, we have 3. And chi square at 0 0.05 with 3 degrees of freedom, the tabular value is 7.815. Okay? So for the computation, we uh, first is we rank. We rank their responses. So for the uh, first child, we have there, okay, uh -huh, 2.5, that will be 1, and then 5.82, and then 3, 6.2, and 4, that is 6.7. So for child 2, we have antibiotic 3 is rank 1, and then we have uh, antibiotics 2 and 1, or 1 and 2, it's just the same. We have there. The highest is 4, antibiotic 4, and then so on. So for these uh, treatments, okay, we get the sum, 3TI or treatment 1, we have 12.5. Treatment 2, we have 12.5, the sum. And treatment 3, we have 9.5. Treatment 4, we have 15.5. Okay, so using the formula, we have there FR is equal to 12 divided by, we have our blocks, is 5 times K, that is 4 times 4 plus 1 times, okay, the summation of the treatment squared. We have 12.5 squared plus 12.5 squared plus 9.5 squared plus 15.5 squared, okay, minus 3 times 5 times 4 plus 1 okay so here our fr is equal to 2.16 okay so for the decision rule if the computed value of fr is greater than the tabular value of the chi square reject the null hypothesis for our conclusion since the computed value of fr that is equal to 2.16 is less than the chi square tabular value of 7.815 we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There's no significant difference between the reactions of the five children to four antibiotics. Okay? So...